a nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Polk. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm good. I mean, September 24th, 2024. <laughs> yes, yes. we, <laughs> Yes, we have. We're back with like two concurrent comic book shows going, <laughs> which has been a while since we've had to like juggle, you know, talk about two shows at once. I guess it's been since the summer. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. we were juggling through the end of, uh, technically through the end of July. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I guess House of the Dragon. It hasn't been and, uh, too long, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely been a while since we've really been in this genre. Yeah, 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 no, we, I know we had Supercell, which, uh, folks, you know, check that out. We, uh, finished that last week, and yeah, we're moving now to Agatha and, uh, and the Penguin. Penguin, yeah. But before that, um, so you you just committed a sin where we had the pre-show and you did not ask me if I've watched this trailer. And as soon <laughs> as I opened up the the doc, I, I told myself, shit, I was supposed to watch that this morning. Um, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I did watch it. The thing. Come out I, until May 2025. So in my defense, between now and then, I will have eventually watched one of the Thunderbolts trailers. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it gives away the whole movie. But it's actually, also out enough where. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, actually, it didn't give away the movie, which was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, this, um, yeah, the Thunderbolts trailer did drop, uh, yesterday morning. I, I didn't, I, I did not know it was coming, but it, it did. And, uh, it's funny hearing all our YouTube reactors, uh, complaining about how Marvel was like putting copyright blocks on all of their reaction videos. But, uh, so I'm gonna be very careful and not put anything in here that will get our, blo- our content blocked by, by Marvel. But yeah, it was, it was, it was a good trailer, I guess, um, I know you haven't watched it. Uh, you know, it does have the Thunderbolts asterisk. You know, have Yelena, all the, you know, uh, Sergey, all the characters are showing up. Bucky's back. Uh, we we do learn that Bucky, like, washes his um, his his arm in, in the dishwasher, <laughs> which was, like, when I did see that, that part in the trailer, I was like, oh, okay. Uh, you know, question answered. But, um, but yeah, you know, it, it really, it just sort of did a, a job of just, setting up our characters and, and reintroducing all the various um, people that that um, uh, Valentina has uh, been recruiting throughout uh, some of the previous iteration Marvel movies and TV shows and um, and you know sort of sets that up and and uh, yeah I thought it was, I actually I, I did have to say that when I watched the trailer, I was just like, okay, I, I, I feel this, I, I, you know, I, I, I had good, I had good, I had good vibes from it, uh, as far as feeling like Marvel's definitely doing the course correction thing. And, uh, and then of course, with the whole, you know, the whole title with Thunderbolts asterisk, um, you know, I guess there's a lot of theory spiraling out there already going on, whether or not it's the dark Avengers or secret Avengers is what that asterisk means, but, uh, we'll love to hear from, our our listeners to hear what your your thoughts are on on the asterisk with the uh, Thunderbolts title, but uh, and uh, yeah, it's coming next May. Yeah, yeah, but just just theory spiral, guys. We don't want to write the movie before we've seen the movie, only then to get d- disappointed by what they actually do in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. <laughs> I think I, I just I caution people these days because we've seen what has happened as. This genre, and especially as both DC and Marvel has rose to popularity, and it's just mm. like a lot of people yeah. have <laughs> taken the joy out of theory, theory spiraling, because then you're just witnessing and a part of rewriting a story that you haven't even already seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you have your head. Yeah, it's like you have your head cannon, and your head cannon doesn't play out because Mephisto didn't show up. Right. Of Agatha, and then, right. and then you're like pissed off because your head cannon didn't come to into reality. So yeah, right. that's not gonna yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in other news, Kyle Chandler from Friday Night Lights 
is in talks to play. Oh, I thought he was casted. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah so yeah. So this He's is been these, cast this... to play Hal Hal Jordan in Lantern series. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, DC News. Um, yeah. So Josh Brolin, of course, was in talks earlier, and then he he declined to the role. But uh, yeah, depending on what source you looked at, I mean, the Hollywood Reporter wrote it like he's been cast. But I know Variety and Deadline, at least at least, at least initially, still had it couched in the terms of talks in, in their reporting yesterday. But uh, but yeah, uh, Kyle Chandler, who many people definitely will remember him from uh, Friday Night Lights, uh, has been cast as Hal Jordan and uh, in the New Lantern series and. Uh, we're still looking for our new John Stewart, but um, but we do have Hal, and um, yeah, I, I didn't realize this until yesterday, actually, when I was reading about Ch- Kyle Chandler being cast. That um, Chris Mundy, who was the showrunner for Ozark, is actually one of the showrunners for this show. I mean, I, I knew Damon Lindelof and Tom King were a part of the show, but um, uh, I did I did not know that the uh, create one of the creator creative teams behind Ozark was a part of it until now. Did you um, watch Friday Night Lights? I watched some episodes, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean some episodes? I did. Like, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't like, like, I wasn't like, like a full... Did you catch on in the Michael B. Jordan era? Oh, gosh. I mean, I may have watched maybe three or four episodes max. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so I wasn't like, it wasn't like my, I wasn't like a big <laughs> watcher of it, but I did, but... So what no. I did watch of of it and what I do know of Kyle Chandler as an actor, I mean, I think this is a great choice for Hal Jordan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I accept. Um, but um, because I I fell off right around the time when clearly all of the kids had grown up. <laughs> they did some recasting and some stuff. And then I kind of circled back around just to watch like, the final few episodes mm-hmm. um so so i i'm all too familiar with kyle chandler um and i and then, like i said i i think this is pretty good casting for what has been i've heard about what the they're trying to do with this um and and yeah yeah so it's it's good news no because I know how badly Will wants to talk the penguin so no no let's start with let's start with Agatha let's stay you know we we oh, had we had we had Marvel DC it. so now let's go back to Marvel well we had Marvel we had Marvel news first with Thunderbolts then we had DC news with the lanterns and now let's go back to marvel so Agatha all along started what did you think about the first episode I liked that I liked it I mean it was um I did not know what to really expect with this show and uh so when it started out and, and and i saw where they were going again with the very similar vibe that they and theme that they went with with um with wandavision you know just picking up the genre motif in this case it was you know i guess a sort of play on the uh um uh, mayor of east east eastwick or uh, the one that um oh gosh what's her what's her name um Blank on actress's name, but that, it, but it's one of those. It's an HBO show, but uh, I saw where they were uh, where they were going with that, and you know, with the true crime kind of theme, and uh, yeah, it was. Um, I was like, okay, uh, you know, I was sort of getting me back into this world, getting re familiar with Agnes as, as she was known, you know, in 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 one division before she re- was revealed, and uh, yeah, you know, I thought I thought the first episode. What did what it needed to do, which was, and actually both episodes, both one and two, were really it was smart of them to release them together because they they really were a lot of setup. Yeah, speaking about true crime, I did start to watch the monsters. Mm. Yeah, the uh, the um, Ryan Murphy show about oh, yeah. the Mendez brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure it's called. No, it's yeah. just monsters. It's not the monsters. It's just monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong. Ryan Murphy was also somewhat behind o- the People versus OJ, right? Yeah, he was. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, People versus OJ, the People, uh, <laughs> yeah. Andrew Cunanan, yeah, right. all those, right. yeah, yeah. He's never going to recapture the People versus OJ. <laughs> 
<laughs> I I'm I'm sorry. I mean, I think I haven't watched it, but we've already talked about this. I know people really quote unquote however you want to put it, enjoyed Dahmer, but I just I this it, I just don't think it's ever gonna be like that was so firing on all cylinders and there was mm-hmm. so much nuance and there were so many different characters and angles at play um, that I can see remnants of it, but it's it's a different story. And it just that style and the way they they did the people versus OJ worked because of the story itself. Mm-hmm. Where I think sometimes they're trying to shove that style into mm. a story where it's like, well, part of it works and then part of it doesn't. Because, mm. I mean, I I don't really, I this is me, um, when did the murders occur? Was it Jimenez? in the 80s or was it in the 80s? I want to say it was like the, uh, the Menendez brothers, I want to say it was like the late 80s, early 90s. Okay, that makes yeah. sense to me. Um, for some reason, at first I read 97, and I was like, okay, so I was alive, but now we've confirmed I wasn't really alive <laughs> during that time. So that's why I've never really heard about this story. Um, and that being said... Yeah, they were convicted in I, 1996. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, it it was a long and I and I and I get why I guess I don't want to linger too much on this, but where I was going with it is I don't I don't know how much is true and how much is disbelief. I just I'm I'm at episode five mm-hmm. um, and I've already seen and heard people like insinuate some stuff that happens in episode five. I'm really contemplating skipping it. Um, because I've already been through episode four and they were just talking about the potential or the, the claims of the child sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And and like, I'm like, okay, can it, if it's going to get more graphic, then I'm not here for this. (laughs) I can't, I can't. And, and I don't know, I just, Ryan Murphy I don't know. It's so much style that I'm I'm missing the substance. But mm. Mm. yeah, but yeah. but the the actors are doing a good job. Um, overall, I just I think the way they're telling this, it's um, it's not as riveting as um, the People versus OJ. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to check that one out. Also, want to check out the. Um, I know they have the. Um, Aaron Hernandez uh, story. I believe that one's on FX, if I recall. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Hulu. (laughs) (laughs) Anytime a show is on FX, I'm like, thank God it's on Hulu. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I've been, I keep seeing things because I also feel, I'm also pretty sure Netflix released a documentary same time as that. And I'm like, well, Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is Scott Peterson all over again, where he got two dueling documentaries. What the heck? Yeah, I mean, we got all these true crime things going the, right now. Yeah. yeah, the viewer, I mean, for for the last decade or so, we've seen a high rise and people really enjoying cr- true crime. So, I mean, to circle back to Agatha, I agree with you. I think that was a smart device to use because... Um, it's not too jarring for the viewer, considering mm-hmm. if you really make the connection okay this is a spinoff of wandavision remember that but i will i will admit i don't know what i was thinking during the first 20 minutes of this but i was just like i could not really remember exactly what happened to agatha at the end of wandavision yeah sense like there was this i was like well i know wanda eventually like puts everything back in normal but why are we still doing this tv motif i mean she and for some reason it didn't really connect to me like i'm like 
Oh, wait, she lost her powers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She got trapped. It took me a while. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say the whole first episode. No, probably a good 20, yeah. 20 minutes to realize. Um, I was there too. I, it, it, I, I, it, I, I had that same feeling. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. She, Wanda, you know, Wanda did take her powers away. And, the, you know, because I guess the thing about the end of WandaVision, you know, it, it's, everything leading up to that finale was just so, you know, it really built up to such a great story. And then the finale was your typical Marvel, you know, green screen, fighting in the sky, but, right. you know, and, and stuff. So I had forgotten that, she, you know, I remember she had, so yeah, like like you, it's like, oh yeah, that's right. Moana did cast a spell, take her powers away. And then, but uh, but beyond that, I did not and know. Trapped, and trapped huh? her in Westview. Yeah, in Westview, because yeah spell to to trap her and make her quote unquote forget right um and we're immediately after being introduced to audrey plaza um character we are um starting to see the cracks now Mm. okay i don't my one gripe Mm. is the the typical i'm about to kill you Oh, wait, let me give you time to talk yourself out of it. And then we're going to have a season. (laughs) It's just, I really didn't like that. Um, Also, I was thinking pretty much the whole time that just questioning, questioning more or less um, Audrey Plaza's character is Agent Vidal or just Mm -hmm. Vidal uh, because she's a witch Mm -hmm. of some sort. And she clearly has a vendetta against Agatha and wants to kill her only to be talked out of it because, and and Agatha makes a strong point, like, it's not just killing me, it's also, like, taking me down when I'm at my strongest, not when I'm at my weakest. And so then um, Vidal just decides, okay, I'm going to let the Salem Seven come and kill you, which sets us up for the next episode. But... I just, if that was her plan the whole time, she certainly wasted a little bit of time because she just allowed, like, it kind of felt as though in some moments she was trying to get Agatha to snap out of it Mm -hmm. and helping her. Mm -hmm. So, and I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, clearly whenever Agent Vidal was like, trying to to help her there i mean there's there's there, there's a deep obviously a deeper story there and and i don't know and, and it was obviously you know there was clearly the, the the sexual tension between the two of them as well as far as just the flirting and and you know so there was that history um but you know but as we as we see in the second episode not not agatha has a history of sapping people's powers so <laughs> Um, so I don't know if that happened with them in the past and that's part of the vendetta or, you know, obviously we'll get more about. Well, I I understand that. Like I knew that like they had, they clearly know each other. I didn't pick up on any flirting, but that's besides the point. Um, but I was questioning, (laughs) like, why did it seem like she was helping her when? and yeah. when she she ultimately wanted to like i just i don't know it was i mean unless it has something to tie unless it ties back to want i mean maybe that was why you know well i think there was two things one i think she was trying to help her because i think she was trying to figure out what happened to the dark old because as agatha was 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 as agatha was you know Looking at the library card, and you Agatha know, she was didn't, scratching. Didn't tell her what happened to the Agatha. Didn't tell her what happened to the dark hole. No, I think no, I think she, I think Agent Vidal was trying to figure out. I mean, I think part of the thing that she was part of why she was trying to help Agatha along was because she she suspects that Agatha has something to do with the dark hole going missing. So. I think that was part of why she was trying to help her, especially as Agatha was piecing together the clues 
on the legal pad and you know and she you know she started writing it out so i think that was i think that was part of what she was what was part of her mission there as far as you know try, trying to give her breadcrumbs to, to tease those things out and help her regain her memory okay i mean yeah um that could be the case um and then we get a teen yeah hey that is how he's credited in imdb yep. <laughs> for a while i was calling him the child <laughs> like, that's what I mean. he's clearly the teen played by jode lock um who we meet s- stealing something from agatha's house and then agatha takes him down to the um be interrogated and um, it's pretty clear within five minutes that he's a witch. Mm-hmm. Um, and so initially it's kind of like, well, is he working with Vidal? No, he's actually on a separate mission and is actually a fanboy of Agatha of some sort. Yep. Um, and, 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 and then she inadvertently kidnaps him. Inadvertently. Um, yep. <laughs> Yeah, yep. kid, kidnaps him, um, and we find out more about him in the second episode um, because he has a plan where he he wants to get he wants to find the road, which yep. the road leads to great power, um, and so he convinces Agatha, who has actually done that before to take him there um but first they need to find a coven and so we're introduced to a few characters and reintroduced to um the neighbor who i I don't know her first name but it's just hart um mrs hart yeah Mrs. hart mrs hart who who is just great it was so like that that really um picked up that was that was a really good choice um i i loved her going to the party and then as they're doing the seance, just looking around like, oh, everyone knows a song. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love just that they're like lip singing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, so yeah. Great. And then so every now and then you see out of the corner of the screen, like her head, like bobbling along and getting really. <laughs> it's just classic. Um, but what are what are your thoughts about the kid, the teen? And um, who he is, because we we learn in this episode that any time he tries to tell Agatha his name mm-hmm. or who he is in any sense of the word, um, she suddenly cannot hear. Yeah, so I know I think he is, I think he's Wiccan. Um, I that is. Hmm? I don't know who that is. He's uh, he's one. I think he's if I recall, I want to say he's one of my, uh, Wanda's kids. That was created in the magic in you know uh in 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 the comics i i can't remember all his history but um uh, but i believe it is one of wanda's sons and so that's part of the reason why he it, part of the spell i guess is that you know agatha can't understand what he who he is so um so that's you know part of the part of the mystery that we'll have throughout the season yeah 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 i was thinking the whole time that I feel like at one point people were talking about Agatha or not Agatha, but Wanda's kids being involved in this show mm-hmm. to an extent. Um, so that makes that would make sense. Um, and and seems like probably the highest probability that that's what's going on. Um, what else? Anything else you want to talk about? Um, episode two? I mean, the coven gets formed, and then we see the road at the end. Yeah. Um. I mean, no. I think this, like I said, this as the beginning. I mean, these two episodes really were like set up for, you know, for the show. It was smart to drop them together because if I think if we had had them a week apart, um, uh, you know, I don't think they would have flowed as well. But having them back to back like this, um, you know, did 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 lend lend itself to a, to I think a, a very solid start to this show 
Um, and, I, and, I, and I enjoyed it. I, I, I really did because, like I said, I didn't ha- know really what to expect. Um, and you know, and, and as far as the as far as the the witches singing their song and stuff in the show, it, it definitely worked better than it did in the acolyte. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm I, I'm I'm very curious to see where 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 the series progresses. Yeah, I think overall. I mean, it's been two plus years since we've seen WandaVision. Mm -hmm. And so it did a very good and smart job of bringing us back to Westview. Like reminding us about what happened every time Agatha um, interacted with her neighbors. And and I like how Wanda suddenly in Westview has become he, uh, she who shall not be named. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like like the PTSD is still there, which is still fascinating. Oh, just a shout out to Catherine Hahn for um, and Disney Plus. Man, she was she was nude. Um, yeah. You didn't see anything. Very just... careful angles, but clearly nude. <laughs> Yeah, so I think we did see some. I think we did see her butt, but that was about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm just, I'm just like, you know what? You go, you, you go, because I, I really, I think this, it, these episodes also did a good job of why they wanted to give Catherine more time to shine. Yeah. Um, yeah. through this yeah. because she really holds her own mm-hmm. and holds the show throughout these two episodes, arguably throughout, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm glad we get two episodes, but I could have probably done a week in between and, and it been fine too. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just because I think the first episode was stronger than the second episode. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, I, yeah. I went back and forth, but at the end of the day, I did feel like the first one was stronger than the second. Yeah. Um, um but and to your point too about giving Catherine Hahn the shine, opportunity to shine, I think the other thing that they that that allowed her to Agnes and and as a character to shine was we really got to get introduced to more of Agnes as an individual instead of just the instead of just the um, nosy neighbor that that she was in one division. They started to flesh her out more, um, I think, in, in these two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember her being the nosy neighbor. I remember well, her being the wicked witch from the West. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, well, that's that's what we got at the end. But I mean, yeah, building up yeah. to that point before the no, reveal. I, I, right. Yeah. I completely understand why you said that. Um, yeah. And it just reminds me of the scene where she's peeling off those layers of all those mm-hmm. different characters um, because they did go through the decades of television, yeah. um, which, again, is maybe another reason why they presented Agnes where she was, because it did look like something that would air on HBO right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, true crime aside, it's just what the whole premise of that show and what um, people are watching these days. Yeah. So overall, it's very good. Three years clearly has passed. Um, and I, I I like the fact that um, it's not just that we are, have two comic book shows to um, to talk about, but two spinoffs. Mm-hmm. And um, they both played it very smart. Um, but in different ways, because while it's been three years since we've seen WandaVision and in this world of Westview, it's been three years in the Penguin. It's very clear that it's what it's been a week. It's been a week. That boy, yeah. Batman. Yeah. Two, two years, yeah. two years in real time since the movie, the Batman, because it was yeah. Uh, and then. Yeah. And then one week from the events of the Batman and it, and yeah. they did a smart job i mean what i really like to your point about how they t- took different approaches uh one 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 element of that to me was I'll, if you never if you didn't watch the batman they did a great job of summing up really the the the, the key moments and the of the end of, of that movie 
um, in the first few minutes of of the Penguin, and also just for us as view, as me because I haven't watched I haven't watched the Batman in a while. So it, it it reminded me of like I mean I remember the flood and all that stuff, but you know I have forgotten that it was a realtor to set it off the bombs and stuff. So it you was like a, I forgot that I did I really did. It's been a long time. Like I said, I think I've only watched the Batman also once in the theater and maybe once afterwards, and I haven't watched it since. I've only watched it once in theaters. Yeah. But I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah like yeah. clear critical yeah. point. I didn't. I mean, yeah. I remember memory is a weird thing because I feel as though um, in this first episode after hours, they did a good job of very quickly, as you put it, reminding you, jogging your memory of the critical events. And I, I wouldn't, I would also say the critical events pertaining to how do you set up a series of, or a show season involving the penguin. So it's like mm -hmm. things that happened at the end of the Batman that really will impact the penguin and the world he's living in. Yeah. Um, and and so it's been a week since the death of Carmine Falcone. And um, this leads to a a conversation with uh, between between Al and Penguin. But um, <laughs> before we get into the events of this episode, um, yeah. Will, why don't you just share your overall thoughts? Overall thoughts, as I touched on it earlier, um, definitely think it, it did a good job of just, and, and and really to piggyback on your thought, it really harnessed why we should care about this character and and his backstory and and why he was so interesting. Um, you know, because I, I did, you know, I was listening to the uh, the official podcast of of the the Penguin, and they they noted that Oz only had six scenes in the movie. Um, and, and so he, w w with the way they framed this show and what happened, you know, and, and, and then to your point, how now because of Carmine being gone, um, the power vacuum opening up, it opens the door to like really giving us an exploration of this character. And especially whenever we first you know, we, whenever we get those early intense minutes with him, that conversation between him and, and Al. Uh, so I, I really just, really just enjoyed just from the minute I was just, from the get, I was just engrossed into in this world again. Uh, and also just the groundedness of it. I mean, just seeing things like the FEMA, you know, just seeing like the FEMA disaster recovery uh, centers and stuff. It just, you know, Yes, this you know. Yes, this is a comic book world that we're in, but it, it really not only did it set up the you know penguin as a character, but it just reminded us as Gotham as a character as well, and 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 it really just a very grounded grounded world that we're that we're living in in in, in this iteration of of the Bat Universe. Yeah, I I would agree that this this first episode. Um, it was it was pretty a it was captivating just because of Colin Farrell's performance. Um, yeah. yeah, we I mean, put aside makeup and all of that, just his mannerisms and he owns the entire episode. Um, this is the penguin and we literally follow him throughout mm -hmm. the entire episode, which is so such a um, you would think that would be such a more common thing, but it's really not because yeah. especially in this day and age where we have, we have way more ensembles. Mm -hmm. This really isn't an ensemble. Okay. I would, I would argue based solely on the first episode, this is not an ensemble. This is Colin Farrell owning, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> owning just, just because, because I would also say, his performance and what he's able to bring out of his fellow actors and actresses um, lifts up the story itself because, yeah. we, I mean, 
we've we've all seen this before. Um, it definitely plays homage to, and and somebody said Breaking Bad. No, no, no. This isn't Breaking Bad. Okay, Breaking Bad is watching a good person slowly over time become evil. Mm-hmm. This is an homage to classic gangster movies yep. and TV. Yep. Like it's you. I mean, from from the opening scene where he talks about what power is, we've heard people, we've heard mobsters talk mm-hmm. like characters say that, and you're mm-hmm. like, yes. Yep. I mean, this is Godfather. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. just, and I think because they did that in such a because between that and just his performance. That's where the nuance was Mm -hmm. um, that I was I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. Now, I wish I wish some other things could be a bit more nuanced, but we'll get there. Um, So overall, I was really satisfied with this episode. Um, And and I'm curious about the next one and just to see where things are going to go. and and just to really um, just watch Colin Farrell earn his uh, first Emmy, so <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I mean, he's got to at least be nominated. Okay? He's got to be nominated. Do not yes. do not pull a Viserys, okay? I'm still. Yeah. That's why we could care less about the Emmys these days because Viserys got robbed. <laughs> Patty <laughs> exactly. was robbed. Patty I don't robbed. understand that. Oh my god. Um. So so. This power vacuum, which is interesting because I was like, okay, yeah, we have a mobster kingpin die at the end of the Batman. So, of course, now everybody's like a power vacuum. It's it's interesting how it didn't feel like a power vacuum in this episode. No, because you're literally watching Oz make a decision and purely... And and you knew it. The moment Al laughed, you're like, mm-hmm. "Oh, you're dead. You're dead." dead. Like, yeah. like we. It, it's a weird thing because, to an extent, some of us viewers already know this character, so we already have this idea of like, if Oz had not shot Al, we would probably be like, "Okay, what what are they doing with the penguin? Like, this isn't the penguin we know. Like, no." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But he does. And then the whole episode is how do you find your way out of this? Because you know. And so we're watching that chess. I don't know if it's chess because I don't really know who to an extent, but we're just watching him scramble and come up with a plan and um, and being able to maneuver himself out of um being caught in this situation, yeah. which I personally thought the ring was going to do it, but they, they did a smart thing with that. They did. They did. Yeah. I mean, I think to your, yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing. It's like, because as soon as I'll poke fun of him uh, and, and he, you know, he and, 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 and Oz reacted in, instinctively. And mm-hmm. I think, and, and I think that's, you know, and you're, you're right. I mean, you know, because the penguin is such a, well-established character you know we we know what we know where the we know what the what we know the end game as far as the story whenever what's penguin is the character we know but this is like how do how do we get to that place it's sort of like even like with the like with the batman you know the movie itself was like you know it's like i guess year two of, of of bruce's journey as the batman and so you know we had a very emo batman he's not like he's he's still refining and becoming the world's greatest detective and so in this show we're seeing how penguin becomes the mass you know the, the boss of gotham's underworld in this show and and you're right i mean how they just sort of structured that at the, at the outset uh right out right out of the gate you know th- there was they're like we're we're going to jump right into this story you know so that you know so i'll you know, poor Joel Maisel was gone in the first, you know, five, 10 minutes or whatever. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out. I'm like, I know that face. I know that voice. Yeah. 
what did you um what do you think of victor so i uh, victor um you know I've, I've, i i've seen this out there and i agree uh this is penguin's version of his robin um and and so but sort of this how yeah but um but you know but it's sort of how victor falls into into this situation because you know big ones at the iceberg lounge and you know these kids are just you know again taking advantage of the situation because again we're just a week from the from the from the flood and 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 so you know he's at the you know he's at the, tr the true proverbial wrong place at the wrong time <laughs> and, yeah and, um, yeah did, and, and, did you recognize the actor i did not okay did we talk about did we talk did we watch and talk about the show the runaways do you remember that show i remember i did not watch it you did i did yeah what I that remember. doesn't seem right <laughs> Yeah, you watched it. I think with our yeah, with I think you were I think you had watched it with um, some other, I think prior to me joining the podcast or, or came around the same or maybe around the same time. Maybe around the same time because it, yeah. it was from 2017 to 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, because he because he he played a character on that. Um, okay. I just I don't know. I could I had to look at IMDb for it, but. Okay. I I was I was watching and I'm like your face looks so familiar I cannot mm -hmm. put my finger on it. Um, I just I don't think like to go back to everything I was just saying about Carl and Farrell. Um, we we don't know enough about Victor. We haven't seen enough from Victor. It was very clear that okay, you need to establish someone who is able like Colin Farrell or Oz can talk to throughout this episode. So we just don't get 20 minutes of him staring off into the distance, clearly thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he to come up with a voice. So, so, so why not? And, and yeah, like Robin, I even put that in my notes, but also just, someone who it makes sense and mm -hmm. you understand why i mean you understand why just not necessarily i think more so from your your basic understanding of who penguin is yeah. um than than anything else so right. and, and, yep. and i think i think the actor um is hopefully going to learn a lot from colin um, and I'm just I'm I'm interested to see if the if um, if they're able first of all if he'll survive this season. Yeah, that was what I was about to say because I mean every moment. I mean I will say as far as his uh, the actor who plays Victor, his portrayal he 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 brought the right element of fear of like is this going to be the moment you know like I think about the the moment when they're in the in the uh, you know, when when Oz tells him to look at the sunrise and, um, you know, is this the moment that he gets, you know, that he, that he caps this kid? Um, oh, he was going to live the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. But but, but I think the point, is, but I know it's going uh, you know, to your you're, you're right. I mean, Oz needed that 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 person to play off of. Yeah. But but I think they still did a good job of keeping the tension there throughout the episode of is this kid going to make it or not? At least for me, at least at least for yeah. me, it did. Yeah, yeah, it it didn't for me. Um, mm. I I, in a weird way, I, as soon as Al dies, um, I didn't really have too much tension going on in this show. Mm. I just, I mean, this is the first episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. There, there wasn't a whole lot of stakes. It was fascinating watching figuring out the plan and seeing the yeah. plan but tension i don't i didn't really have a, a sense of tension even though there was like two scene fight sequences and all of that stuff but yeah. um yeah. but yeah i didn't i didn't really get a lot of of tension um yeah. even even with sophia um yeah 
And and so writing wise, I'm I'm very interested for them to flesh out more of that what happened. Um, because mm. we know mm. we learn that she is freshly released from Markham. Yep. Penguin did not know. We also learn that Penguin clearly had something to do with her being sent to Arkham, and mm-hmm. she knows it. Yep. And and there's somewhat, I don't know. I see. I sense the not flirting, but a little bit of like, okay, we used to hook up at one point. So yeah. I don't. I don't know. And there's also um, she quickly figures out um that that he somewhat is involved with the disappearance of her brother Mm -hmm. and um because he uses this idea of this new drug that al told him about um and as his as his bargaining chip to retain his uh block i don't i don't know what they called it but, yeah, the drop. Yeah, then it yeah, drops. Yeah, drop to retain that. Retain yeah. that. Um, so and I, I do, I do appreciate that they they bring out Sophia and she appears to be formidable. I mm-hmm. will say something. Yeah. I was not overly impressed with this actress. I've seen her in other <laughs> things, mm. but the way I just thought it was one note the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, you're okay, you're getting a lot of screen time and I'm seeing the same person. Like there there wasn't it was it's just like let me just stare like dead eye stare at you yeah. and kind of mumble but also just talk really I don't know. Like I get what she was doing, but it also felt one out to me. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, I, it was, I mean, I thought she, it was, I mean, she did a great job, but it was, but it was very one dimensional at this point. Like, you know, I'm the hangman, I'm just out of Arkham and, and um, I know whenever they had the torture scene there with, with, with Oz, um, you know, she did get a little bit more menacing, um, but, um, but yeah, but the, the scene in a restaurant, whenever they were, whenever she was, sorting out what and, and reading between the lines and figuring out that he was he did have something to do with Al's disappearance um yeah I mean I think one of the most of the thing I got conveyed from that from that scene was just the history and and also I was thinking oh we're gonna get some we're gonna get some we're gonna get some flashbacks with 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 the two of them and and probably Carmine as well just to sort of flesh out what that history is there mm. well well We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I, in a way, I hope we don't. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't know. The flashbacks, they can be an easy crutch. Yeah. Well, I know John Turturro is playing, he's stepping in for, um, uh, who played, who played Carmine in the movie? I can't remember who, but he, is, but Carmine is going to show up in, in the series at some point. Great. Well, so, yeah. I would or maybe, want, or maybe, or maybe it'll just be with with Sal Maroney and and Carmine. I was gonna say, I was yeah. gonna say, like, I mean, I I would I would be okay more so with flashbacks about those two and yeah. and what happened there and how um how uh, Carmine even got a hold of Sal's ring that mm-hmm. is a very um, important piece. Yeah. Um, that gets moved around from Al to Oz and then ultimately to Sal in the end, um, who's in prison. Also, did we know that Sal was going to be pr- um, played by Clancy Brown? Um, no, I didn't know that. I, or if I, I, yeah. First of all, love it. And also yep. love the fact that I did not know. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, when he showed up, I was like, oh. Yeah. All right then. <laughs> no, I thank you. <laughs> it's just a welcome surprise. Yeah. <laughs> very, very good. And I also appreciate that he immediately is like, "Penguin, you're full of shit." Yep. Um, only for for them then to 
for Oz to use the ring, which I mean, that ring the whole time I was like, dude, you brought it back to your house. You put it like in your nightstand. They're going to find that like three episodes later. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm glad that they were very aware of that and managed to use that to help further convince Sal um, to, or not even convince him, but more to, to, uh, to realign, to make a, a new alliance. So at the end of the day, Penguin comes out clean, um, yeah. no matter which side, and ultimately starts a um, starts the mob war again between mm-hmm. these two riv- rivalry families. Yep. Um. So so yeah, and and at the end of it, it's just Oz and Vic enjoying some mixed flavored um, slush puppies. Yeah. Yeah. And Dolly Parton, Not <laughs> nine to five. I love that. That was a, that was just like a, a, just whatever that ending. I was just like, yeah, that 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 was. I was like, yeah, uh, I, I'm I am in in for the ride. And also too, I know we hadn't talked about Oz and his his relationship with his mother, and you know, I guess with her dementia and stuff. But uh, you know, there's again just you know how how all you know the fact that he went by there during the episode. Um, seeing the relationship that he has with her they went in a direction with it that I, I, that I wasn't anticipating so I was like um so yeah so you know so. again huh how so you said that it went in a direction you weren't anticipating how so um he he it was almost it was um he was a very caretaker esque role of 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 it where you know he wanted to make sure she had she had what she needed and making sure that she was safe um instead of it instead of it being a jacked up kind of relationship between the two of them even though yeah so uh, right but, right like yeah. like i i they presented initially that kind of dynamic and then they also um showed that um uh, she's definitely his his mom <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> definitely his mom yep. um and it's and she she probably passed down some traits that weren't the best <laughs> so, <Yep. laughs> for sure, so for sure. I, like i i i think they did a good job of showing both sides of that dynamic because what what the writers are doing right now is carefully crafting a non like at the end of the day this is penguin this is his show mm-hmm. so he technically speaking technically speaking is our hero yeah we want him to succeed mm-hmm. even though he is a villain in the batman universe like yeah. so it's not anti-hero But it's also not, you can't, you can't, we can't have someone be the vocal point who's has no sympathetic or empathetic qualities. I mean, and that's another reason why you have to have a character like Vic, who Mm -hmm. some, a kid who is like, doesn't know what to do, lost his home, clearly Mm -hmm. trying to get by and just needs a chance. Like, like you you, you can root for someone who's willing to take someone like that on and help him out. Yeah. Um, so, so again, they're doing a very good job. And this all goes back to what I was saying before about the homages to like classic gangster mobsters movies. I mean, yep. in yep. real life, those are not the heroes, but yep. for purposes of story, they make pretty interesting heroes in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, why do you think Goodfellas and the Good yeah. and, and 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 the Sopranos and you know, the Untouchables, all those films? I mean, Al, why Al Capone is still such a cult hero today, to this day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. loyalty, family, all of that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I um. I'm I'm very satisfied with the start. Um, yeah. Overall, Me very too. well done. Me too. And yeah. and yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, because like to your point, you know, to make it, you know, he's not a hero, he's not an anti-hero, but also they're doing, they're paving, they're they're, they're laying the st- the groundwork to show 
why the penguin is one of Batman's arch enemies, toughest enemies in his rogues gallery too. Especially with story with like how with with the using that ring, for example, and how he you know came up with the plan to get these families to fight again. It shows like it's just showing that that you know where this guy is going and, and why Batman why he's such a formidable formidable enemy against Bat for Batman. Right. Right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us at Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Geek Out. You're welcome. 